Hello and welcome back to your boy AGK in another Corrupt Dungeon Guide video. Uh, this time the build is pretty expensive, I'm not gonna lie for a stalker build, but it is really effective, like it's one of the best builds right now. So do not underestimate it, don't sleep on it, try it for sure, but do not try it if it's too expensive for you to actually use. So it is a 525k build ish. Mm, mainly, uh, this is the skills we're gonna be using if we're going against, like when we're BVBing, when you get invaded or invading a person. For the Merc Jacket, you're in Bloodlust, of course, Balanced Mind, Balanced and Mind on Inspector Hood, and Flash of Insight. For Soldier Boots, you're in Healing Sprint, and then Toughness, and of course, your passive is the second passive well prepared. Because every force force spell it resets your Q, so you try to make your force spell is actually your Q, so that you Q twice. And whenever you're in kite, whenever like you're swapping to full kite, you're swapping to second Q, explosive bolt, and you're swapping to cult, uh, cult tropes. So basically, this is for full kite. This is for prowling or just fighting while standing. And sometimes you need the, the silence, like let's say against swords sometimes it can be useful. But honestly, I would actually say the Thundershot is pretty more effective. So I would just say stay on Thundershot, it's pretty much better. And go for auto fire, and if you're going full kite, just switch to explosive bolt and cut troops. You can understand more in the video why am I saying that, because it's really effective against cursed stuff. So just focus on that part, I already lost two games in against uh, cursed stuff and I won the third, I explained exactly what did I do wrong there and what did I, what am I, what did I do right to actually win the fight. It's pretty much a little bit of a mind game, so I hope you focus on it and understand what I'm saying. And Let's go and see the video just before <laughs> we swap to the video. I'm sorry. Don't forget if you wanna join the giveaway, put in a uh, put in a uh, comment with your in-game name, hashtag giveaway, and like the video. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm sorry, I don't know. I can't talk today. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's go. So for starters, we have a shadow caller build at the beginning. He's in this crate here. Not in grudge, so we just try to force a fight. So he used guardian boots, so we just peel off. Silence didn't really hit. His gig boots is almost done, so that's why basically we stand it there. And then always remember use your merc jacket Zenak Q. Like you pretty much get your full merc jacket from the Q only. Like you just need one more tech after the queue and you're actually two techs after the queue. And it was a pretty easy job. That's a Trinity. He did his switch to reflect when he saw me. So that's why I need to play kite a bit here. Because I can't actually stand to queue here because he's just gonna reflect into an E. So I use Merc Jacket. He uses Cleric Robes. That's why I peel off into a silence so I can queue again. And then I can actually like use my Spectre Hood to get my Merc Jacket again. And then I Merc Jacket into a Q to be able to actually survive from his basic attack. But he still does deal so much damage. Silence to actually ruin his Reflect. And pretty much here he dropped the stack. So I could have EQ'd him. But I did notice that he dropped stacks. Right now his E is back up, so I need to bait it somehow, but my E range is big enough, so I just eat him from far away. Now I know that his only way to win this is to eat towards me and attack me, so I just need to keep the range difference, and my boots would come before him. Claymore, he pre-stacked into an E, I missed silence, uh, so he just used boots back to get away from his... Uh, Hunter Hood, Merc Jacket into a Q, he cleric robes, I still get my Merc Jacket off from the next Q after his cleric robe is out, into another Merc Jacket, another Q, and here it's a pretty much like 
scroll, you can say, and also your Mr. Snapper is carrying us. Sorry for the FPS drop. Another Claymore build. Pretty much a Claymore and Curse this is one of the most like the most stuff you actually gonna meet in playing Stalkers. This guy's crying Greg boots on Frost Shield. So I just use the Merc jacket into an E. Always remember we're pretty brawly. Here he has his E back, so I need to silence him into a queue for Merc jacket to actually pop up. He is inside my Martlock cave, which pretty much was a really bad idea here. He should have all these E until my Martlock cave finishes, because that's a lot of damage that got deducted for no reason. Another light crossbow, I switch it into a dodge to like ruin my E, which is a good idea. He's pretty much same build except for uh, Clear Cowl instead of the Specter Hood, so I still get my effect from the Merc Jacket out of his Clear Cowl, so it's pretty fine, honestly. I'm just kiting back here until I get my cooldowns. Like if he explodes, he explodes the thingy. And actually that was a bad idea for me. I should have played a bit aggressive here even though his dodge roll is back. So my E is not gonna really do any damage if he iframes it. I use my healing sprint into an E and he dodge roll my E. Here he had his passive back so I went back. I could have played offensively but I just felt there is no reason for it. Like it is on dodge roll, he reduced it, he didn't really have anything to come back to me. Uh, at the same time, like, if we go back again, I know I can win this easier. I just ruined my passive, I didn't take effect out of my passive so much in the last fight. So in this fight, I actually focused more on the passive. Remember, every force spell, you get your Q again, so you try to double Q. Uh, that's a curse. Curse is pretty much a problem for this build if he's on grudge. So I switch it here. Like here, that was my first time try uh, getting battling a curse. So I would switch it to a dodge roll, which didn't really have any effect because he still didn't. E. I'm just dying out of grudge and normal text. Even though I didn't really iframe his E here, it doesn't matter, I would have died either way. So what I should have done is actually switch it to second Q and play it kite, so that like I forces him to not get any effect out of grudge, which technically I thought I'm gonna try it again here when I saw like another curse build and I actually thought I'm just gonna try to prowl it. I should have at least switched it from uh, the silence W. It's not really effective at all. Like I get nothing out of it. And I pretty much die here out of bleeds alone actually. Uh, so whenever you play cars, like I showed them in order because that was my two trials. This guy like, I didn't want to put it all because it was gonna be too much, but I switched it to second Q and like third W, like the trap thingy, and played full kite against him so that I forced him to switch off grudge and he switches off grudge to disagree. So, whenever he, like, the second he switched from grudge to disagree, I switched it again to my first Q and like the shred W to actually out brawl him because if he doesn't have grudge on, on his W, you can definitely win the fight. Like, you're gonna see here, there's no way that he out damages you. Like, he barely does any damage without his grudge. Even though he does Merc, uh, like, he does Cleric Cowl or Merc Jacket, I didn't get so much value out of it, but it's completely fine. Like, you're gonna see. Like, I wouldn't say he barely, like, he still does a good ton of, a good amount of damage. It's just that, like, Without grudge, there's no way really for him to win this. Like here, you can see like just no way. I didn't even need to use a resi bot or anything or any kind of bot. So all you need to do is switch off to full kite until he switches off grudge because if he stays on grudge while you're on full kite, like you actually win the fight so easily. So 
basically that was a, bo a war bow fight. He kept switching tablets to try stuff because like he kept three sets of fights since he has too much mobility. But I would say it was like his fault here is switching to the snare tablet. Because I'm pretty much like every time he stands to press an E, I can just take you and I just out of roasted promise the snapper. I'm like almost taking. Like I ruined the Merc jacket here, that was a bad idea. He used his healing pot and started coming back to me. Here I know I can turn, but I just want him to like use a put or anything for me to actually be able to catch him later. I shouldn't have used my put here, because I could have just killed him here if I didn't use my boots already. But either way, like you can see like even so, like switching to second Q and Snare W was really a bad idea from him, like there's just no way that he can deal enough damage for actually killing me, throwing my healing just from Qs and like normal attacks. But I definitely appreciate the idea that he didn't just break crystals because I did run into another guy who actually just went to break crystals. Um, you never should have gotten into a lava like that just doesn't make any sense so I just used Wanderlust to like completely follow him um, but I would say never underestimate a bow caster because still like you're gonna see right here if he had his keeper cape on he actually kills me here right? like or almost kills me here no he actually kills me for sure if he has his keeper cape on and actually use the resi uh, a poison pot early so never underestimate a podcaster, it's a really bad idea to underestimate a person, uh, or a podcaster especially. I hope you guys enjoyed it, tell me in the comments if you did, what other build do you want to see, and always remember if you want to join the giveaway, make sure to leave a comment with hashtag giveaway and your in-game name, and like the video, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. See you guys in the next video, peace out.